Wendell Berry, in a poem that begins, It is hard to have hope, writes, Listen privately, silently to the voices that rise up. From the pages of books and from your own heart, be still and listen to the voices that belong, to the steam banks and the trees and the open fields. There are songs and sayings that belong to this place, by which it speaks for itself and no other. Listen. Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen. Welcome to worship. In this place, in this space, in this moment, we stop to listen. To listen to the word of God, to hear about a sower who sows extravagantly, to hear the notes of the harp that draw us closer to God. No matter who you are, no matter what is happening in your life, here you are welcome, here you are loved, here you will be listened to. Amen. Again he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got onto a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no roots, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil, and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. When he was alone... Those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to him, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive. They may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. Those are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown to them. And these are the ones sown on the rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away and others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold.
Listen. A sower went out to sow. Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen. So, when I was... Sorry, wanted that one up. When I was trying to decide what to do this Lent, one of the things that um, I haven't ever preached on is Mary Talbertson has this theory about the book of Mark. And she believes that the parable of the sower and her description afterwards, not necessarily the parable itself, but the description of the parable in the Gospel of Mark, describes all the characters within the Gospel. That every character you encounter, every person that Jesus encounters, Every character that shows up in the story is represented by one of the elements of the sower parable. And so this Lent, we're going to look at all, each descriptive character, each one of those sections, and what characters or character represents them. So the first description, right, is that a sower... throws some seed out. And he throws it out and the it falls on the path and the birds come and ate it up. So, Talbertson argues that this section, the characters that are defined by this, the ones that hear the word and then Satan drives it out of them, are the scribes and the Pharisees. That if you'll notice from... Um, the early on in Mark's gospel, when the scribes and Pharisees are present, when the religious folk are there, they hear what Jesus is teaching, but immediately they say, I don't get it, I don't understand, and then as the gospel progresses, they start plotting against him, okay? Then the next seed falls on the rocky ground, now, who in your head automatically pops up when you hear the word rock? Right? Simon. On my rock I shall build this church. Peter. He represents the rocky ground of people who understand and get the word and are excited and enthusiastic and grow. And then, when persecution comes, when trials come, when difficulties come, they fall away. The next soil and seed, it falls on the ground that is covered with thistle and thorns. And when it tries to grow up, nothing happens because there isn't enough room for it to blossom and bloom. So in the story, Talbertson argues that this seed and soil represents the young ruler you remember him, he comes up and says, what do I have to do to inherit, inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, give up everything you own. And he goes away. She also argues that Pilate and Herod could fall into this category. That they hear the word from John or from Jesus and they get it, but they're not willing to give up the wealth of their life. And then the final seed, the final soil. In the Gospel of Mark, that's all the unnamed characters for the most part. It's all the people he encounters who hear the word and he says, now go and do what you need to to become part of the community. Do the religious rites. And instead, they go out and spread the word of what Jesus has done, right? Every unnamed character that you encounter in the Gospel of Mark is that good soil. They feel and experience, they hear the word, and they go out and spread it. But what I was thinking about as I was reading this is one of the things that we don't often do is deep Bible study of the text. Because if you were to look at that first section, the 1 through 9, and then you look at 11 through 20, the question 
you would ask if you were reading a novel is, how does this make sense? Why would Jesus say what he says? Like, why would he tell this story and end it with, anyone who has ears to hear, listen, okay? That's how the story ends. He shares this story about this extravagant sower who show, throws the seed anywhere and everywhere, doesn't care where the seed lands. He goes into every spot across the earth, right? He throws it in the good places and the bad. He throws it in places where it will bloom abundantly, and he throws it in places where it's going to struggle to survive. The sower throws that seed over and over again. And at the end of that story, Jesus says, let anyone who has ears to hear, hear. So then why would he explain the parable? Right? I mean, like, if you were sitting there with Jesus by the lake shore, and he's told you the story, why then would he tell you what it means? If he's saying to you, if you understand this, you'll get it. Okay? So, what that means is when you're reading through these texts, when you're reading through the gospel stories, sometimes the story is part of what Jesus, as a real human being living in a real time, said. And part of the story is what the writer who is writing down Jesus' life adds into the story to help explain the story. And so with that next section, that section from 11 to 20, used by Mark to explain how if you were paying attention to us as we tell you the Gospel of Mark, this story helps you see the greater story. Okay, because I want you to picture this. When people read the Gospel of Mark, when they read it, they actually had gathered into church and somebody had memorized the whole thing, right? All 16 chapters. And spoke it to you. Okay? It wasn't read. It wasn't you were holding a a scroll, and were reading it like you read your nightly novel. When people heard the story, they gathered. And when they gathered, they heard it from beginning to end. And so Mark was trying to guide people, direct them in how to listen to the story. And the reason I want to point that out is because some of the things that are said in that explanation of the parable don't always fit with how we understand what Jesus says. Like when he actually speaks words and tells us how to act and what to do. What happens in that explanation becomes something that separates people, right? Divides them out, says you belong and you don't belong. And yet the message we get from Jesus is everyone belongs. Right? When you hear that story... It doesn't necessarily say that it's bad that the seed landed in those places. It could say that. But it does say that the sower is going to go everywhere. It's going to spread the seed far and wide. It's going to let it land where it may. That the sower wants everyone. People who are in so much pain and trouble that maybe at that moment, all they heard was a little word. But it was one word that they needed to hear. That the sower sows extravagantly, spreads love everywhere, and doesn't think, doesn't count, doesn't determine who should be in and who should be out. And so then when you read that second part of that passage, and it says there are winners and losers, there are people who belong and will be part of the kingdom, and people who won't, it doesn't fit with the next parables. 
So if you read the rest of the chapter 4, after this parable of the sower, he tells two more parables about the mustard seed that is tiny and grows up to be giant. And he tells about a farmer who sows and sows and sows, never caring where the seed lands. And so I think one of the things we need to learn how to do is listen more deeply and ask questions. That it's okay to look at the text and say, this doesn't make sense. And then explore. Figure out ways to help it make sense. Like when I was deciding to do this, one of my favorite painters is Van Gogh. And that's probably one of my favorite paintings, the sower, the one over there. But I decided this week to show you this painting. So this is a letter that he wrote to his brother saying, I have this idea about a painting in which it will have lots of purples and yellows. About a sower. And for Van Gogh, the sower, for him, is this image of the ordinary person, the normal person, the peasant person who works dreadfully hard, who works and labors. And that person, that person, if you look at the painting, where does the sun land on that person? The sun lands right at the top of his head, showing that that person is a saint, right? There's a halo around him. The sun is over the top of him. That the sun represents God, but also represents his connection to God. And this painting, the two paintings, one darker, one lighter, show us that these ordinary unnamed people, the one that the sower sows to, the one that the sower sows to, in Van Gogh's painting, they are those unnamed people that spread the word of God, extract, so that they hear it and flourish and bloom and flower and spread it. That that sower, that peasant, that person who works and struggles, that one is the saint of God. May anyone who have ears to hear listen. Amen. <laughs>
the cries of Yemen and Mexico, where the death from COVID is the highest in the world. Open our ears to hear the cries from Texas where the winter weather has led to power outages, busted pipes, lack of water and heat. May politicians hear and understand the causes. Open our ears to hear the voices of history that teach us about black Americans this month. May we listen and hear all that they have done and been and they continue to do with ears that are seeking to understand. Open our ears to hear the cries of the people in Myanmar after a military coup, and the farmers in India who are rebelling against the new laws. Jesus, you remind us that people may indeed look and not perceive, may indeed listen and not understand. We ask you to let us Look and be able to see. Listen and be able to understand. Jesus, we stop to pray for family and friends who are sick. Family and friends who are recovering from surgery. Those who've had a fall. Those who've been diagnosed with cancer. Those who are grieving. Those who have been left behind. Those who are anxious and depressed and lonely. Be with those who are hungry be with those searching for work. Be with our government and teach them to be moved by compassion. Be with the new life, the new births in our midst. Jesus, we listen and pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.